Good morning, dear community, online BCC community. Good morning on this beautiful uh, Sunday morning. We have woken up to see another beautiful day, and we thank God for that. Uh, welcome to our online service for the 5th of July 2020. Welcome as you uh, connect in and let us know how you're doing on the, on the chat. So good morning everybody. Welcome this morning to our online community service, BCC, Via Christi Community Church. We're waiting for you to join in. Let us know how you're doing. Good morning, uh, Vernon Gounden and family. Good to have you with us. Good morning, Auntie Kay. So good morning, uh, dear community. Welcome. We hope you that you would have a blessed time as we uh, meet online. Good morning, uh, Don and Auntie Roshida. Good morning, Julian. We hope that you're having a a good morning uh, thank you for joining us online thank you for connecting online good morning nits and yasmin good morning uh bobby bina and family good morning lenita and derek and the padiachis and punans welcome good to have you online this morning well, we hope you all had a beautiful week and that you're looking forward to the Sunday morning's service with uh, Via Christi Community Church. Um, as you come on in, please utilize your emojis as you might have them there. Uh, you're also welcome at this time as we, as people are signing in to, uh, to just uh, give uh, either some praises or, or for this week or some prayer requests. Our thoughts and our prayers go out to some of the family members of, of the Spider family uh, that have lost their dear brother, so Ralph Spider, and family, our sincere condolences from Marisha and I and the church who knows uh, who know Ralph and, and Claire and the Spider family. And some of the families in our community uh, at Via Christi are related to, to Ralph uh, and Claire, so our condolences to them. So if there's anyone else with some praise or prayer items, please line it up now and later we'll also take a moment to sincerely, as a community, gather uh, around prayer. In the chat, you can please put that in right now. Uh, some of our praise and prayer items. Or well, any other news uh, items as well, if you know that there's things you need to be aware of for the community as people are signing in. <laughs> Let's get ready for this Sunday morning worship service online with Via Christi Community Church and all of you that are here. We, we're grateful for our community. We're grateful for uh, this opportunity to be online. And also, right now, those of you that are quite, uh, you know, technically savvy and you know how to operate, you're welcome to share uh, the live post right now, and that will that will reach out to your family members and community. As a, as a community of faith in Christ Jesus, we want to connect with people <clears throat> wherever they are uh, at this time. So that's another way that we can, we can connect with others through you sharing. So then if you just sign on, welcome again to Via Christi Community Church. Uh, this is where it's happening right now for the next hour of this service and we're looking forward to being with you all uh, and as we come together let us enjoy this time of connecting 
in Christ Jesus, connecting as a faith community, connecting as a community that builds one another. Amen? Amen. Amen. So for the Sunday morning, we are going to hand over to Tatum and Chad as they lead us uh, out with our service. And as you receive some of what they reflect on, receive this as a way of us witnessing and testifying of our faith. So let's hand over at this moment to uh, Tatum and Chad. Hi everyone, Hi everyone. Welcome, welcome to, to church. church. Um, today we have chosen this passage because we feel that it's so relevant to the current situation that we're facing. I will be reading Psalm 91. Whoever goes to the Lord for safety, whoever remains under the protection of the Almighty, can say to him, You are my defender and protector, you are my God in you I trust. You will keep you safe from all hidden dangers and from all deadly diseases. He will cover you with his wings, you will be safe in his care. His faithfulness will protect and defend you. You need not fear any dangers at night or sudden attacks during the day, or the plagues that strike in the dark, or the evils that kill in daylight. A thousand may fall dead beside you, ten thousand all around you, but you will not be harmed. You will look and see how the wicked are punished. You have made the Lord your defender, the Most High your protector. So no disaster will strike you, no violence come near your home. God will put his angels in charge of you to protect you wherever you go. They will hold you up with their hands to keep you from hurting your feet on the stones. You will trample down lions and snakes, fierce lions and poisonous snakes. God says, I will save those who love me and I will protect those who acknowledge me as Lord. When they call to me, I will answer them. When they're in trouble, I will be with them. I will rescue them and honor them. I will reward them with long life. I will save them. God is telling us in this passage that he'll never leave us, nor forsake us, and that he's our protector. We must always remember that God is in control and he's protecting us through everything, whether it's through this pandemic or um, in our personal and daily lives. Uh, enjoy church. Enjoy the rest of the service. God bless, we keeping you in prayer. Wow, wow, thank you so much, Tatum and Chad. Uh, what a beautiful scripture to open up ourselves this morning. And what a blessing to have that uh, from you both. Uh, just the many promises that God gives to us. Um, We'll be going into our time of praise and worship, but before we do that, let me open up in prayer as well. Lord, we thank you for this time. Thank you for the many people that have come online and even those that will watch the service later. We pray that it would be a blessed time together, that even as we connect uh, in a different way, not face to face, but we know, Lord, that when two or more are gathered, you are here in our midst. And so we thank you for being with us. Thank you for the promises, the beautiful promises that have been read from Psalm this morning. May we hold on to that, those promises of your protection and of providing for us. I ask this in your holy name and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So this morning, let us receive worship. And as we do so, please join along. I, I believe Marisha would have sent out the words for this uh, Sunday morning service. So please open up those PDF documents if you've got them and sing along if you don't know the words. But we are blessed to have Robert and Charlene and John. And then a moment of worship with Alvin Fredericks and Sylvanus Nyker. So every all of these voices we're so grateful for. And as they come on this morning, let's just take time to worship God together. Music as a way of bringing some focus, music as a way of just blessing the heart. And as we do so, we do so giving praise to Jesus. Amen. So over to Uncle Robert and the rest of the team as they lead us in worship. Hi, good morning, brothers and sisters. Um, it's been a, a difficult week. People we've prayed for uh, passed on. I'm thinking of uh, Kevin Spider, thinking of some friends of ours as well, who passed away untimely, some of them very young. And 
what makes it more difficult is mourning under lockdown with severe restrictions on the number of people who may gather at, at, the, at the house of mourning or even at the, at the internment of the body. It's a difficult time and we pray that the Lord will watch over the family of uh, all of these dear people who passed away, all of these friends of ours. And we, of course, remember those who brought requests last week Sunday uh, for prayer, and we continue to pray for them. This morning, brothers and sisters, I want to read uh, from Psalm 119, because we're going to sing a song from Psalm 119. It is the longest psalm in the, in the Bible, in the Old Testament, and this psalm is so rich in the, the call to follow the laws of God. It speaks about following the Lord's ways, and His laws and instructions and commands are just perfect. We keep your law, O Lord, into our hearts so that we will not sin against you. We delight in your commands more than in having great wealth. Open my eyes, Lord, so that we may see the wonderful truths in your law. Your instructions give me pleasure. They are my advisors. Your instructions are my desire. I confess all my sins to you, Lord. There is nothing about me that you do not know. You've heard me and you've answered me. Teach me your ways. Keep me from going the wrong way. Teach me the goodness that comes from your law. Keep me from paying attention to what is worthless. And make your promise come true, Lord, to those who obey you. Give new life, for you are the righteous giver of life, the water of life and the bread of life. I find happiness in obeying your teachings and your commands. And it goes on, brothers and sisters, for five pages. The teachings are wonderful, Lord. Your explanations of your teachings gives light and it brings wisdom to the ignorant. And I can imagine what it was like for the Lord Jesus, who often preached and taught in the temples, how people must have thought, we have never heard teaching like this. And so your word, Lord, is a lamp for my path. It is a guide. I have decided to obey your laws until the day that I die. So, brothers and sisters, this beautiful song called The Law of the Lord uh, is perfect. And of course, some people refer to it as the honeycomb song. of the Lord is true, making wise the simple. More to be desired are they than gold, and much fine gold, sweeter also than honey, and the honeycomb. The precepts of the
praise forever to the King of Kings. We grateful Amen. for this beautiful worship music this morning, praise and worship music that we can sing out. The law of God is perfect. And as we praise the King of Kings, we are mindful today that God hears and answers our prayer. If you are wherever you're at, we want to take a moment right now as a community of faith in Christ Jesus, as a community who loves and cares for one another, to just anchor in a moment of prayer. So I'm going to ask Marisha to lead us at this time. And if you will, please think upon the families that were mentioned uh, mm. through this time. Think upon the families that were mentioned as we continue. Let's spend a moment in prayer. Amen. Lord, we thank you this morning, dear God, that we could come to you with our request, with, with our lamenting, with our hardships and our struggles. And this morning we want to uplift to you different members in our community. We want to bring the spider family to you this morning. And even as they have to face the reality of saying goodbye to their dear brother, uh, Kevin, Lord, we pray for your comfort and for your strength to be over this family. Lord, we also pray for the comfort and strength for uh, for Thiru and his family on the passing away of their dear daughter, uh, Premila, Lord. We pray that your comfort will continue to uphold this family as well. And Lord, for many others that have uh, lost loved ones in this week and are facing the reality of, of having to say goodbye in, in this difficult time of, of COVID-19 when there are so many funeral restrictions and where we are not able to meet with people and share our deeper sympathies. We pray that you will embrace them, Lord Jesus. Holy Spirit, that you would comfort them, that they would feel your warm embrace. They would feel your strength carrying them through this time. And so, Lord, we continue to pray for uh, Auntie Servi and Uncle John in their illness, that you would carry them through this, that you would bring healing, Lord. We also pray, Lord, for Ravi Subramani, who's also going through an illness, Lord, that you would be with him. We pray for Uncle Muthu from CRC, that you would continue to have your hand upon him. Yes, Lord Jesus, I also pray for Raisha and family who have lost their dear dad yesterday. Lord, we pray that you would continue to uphold these dear friends, this dear family, and that they would continue to feel your comfort, your strength, your a healing touch. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to uh, just be with them in this difficult time, that we would come alongside them uh, as we can. We also pray for John and Charlene, Lord, and thank you for them sending a praise and worship song. Thank you for the video that they've sent. And even as they've shared just how hectic it is sometimes, Lord, we pray that you would guide them, that you would provide for them. Lord, we also want to bring, has, uh, Danny has um, asked us to continue to remember for many people and, and women and children who are facing uh, violence in this time. And so, Lord, we don't disregard this and we continue to uphold this, um, this terrible thing that we are facing as a community, that we would be able to, to come alongside of giving hope and strength and support to to women and children who need it in this time right. and to helping lord the perpetrators to overcome this so that they would not continue in this way of violence and so these many prayer requests we leave with you god and we know lord jesus that you are interceding on our behalf um, we also pray for many family and friends who are discovering, Lord, that they do have corona or the COVID-19 virus. And so come alongside yes. and give <clears throat> your strength, give your healing. Lord, may they not be stigmatized in this time, but may we offer comfort, support, and love as you have called us to do. So I ask this all in your holy and precious name and through the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 Yes, we believe that when we pray, God hears and answers our prayers. And so thank you for those of you that have entrusted and, and sent through these prayer requests. Let's continue to uphold these families. Uh, there, there is much that uh, we, can, we can do. There is much that we can, come, that we can take action with as a community of faith. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you to Marisha and for all of you that have just spent this moment in prayer. As we continue this morning, a songwriter writes, Jehovah is your name. Jehovah is your name. And as we worship God, I pray that we'll be blessed by Alvin Fredericks, who plays us a medley of worship. And please continue singing along with the, the words that we provided. And as we as we spend this moment with Alvin and Sylvanus that are to come, let us also ready our hearts for the word of God, where we'll spend a moment with the children and also focus on our community. But this morning uh, and for the rest of the month of July, we as Via Christi Community Church want to have a focus on what does it mean to be the beloved community, the beloved community of God. So even as we worship, we're grateful for this community, right? Uh, and let's do so singing out with Alvin as he leads us. Jehovah is your name. Amen.
bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace the Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you the Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace Amen 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 Amen. Mm-hmm. 
we sing Amen 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 If you are there right now we can sing Hallelujah Hallelujah And we sing Amen, Amen, Amen. Yes, Amen to the Lord, and we 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 declare God's blessings over us as uh, as people this morning. Let's take a moment as we enter into the word for this morning and let's just uh, spend a moment in prayer lord we ask you to bless us right now as we take a moment to reflect on your word may this word be a word that is custom designed for every one of us mm. lord may the reflections that marisha and i uh, the, the reflections that we thought through and penned down lord we just laid now at the foot of the cross and ask you lord to capture these thoughts and then design them specifically for each person that is here and lord for those that will have access to this word may it be a word that changes our hearts our lives and draws us closer to jesus christ our lord and savior amen amen <clears throat> well this month <clears throat> we have an exciting uh theme to think about the theme of beloved community and each week we're going to be uh, discussing important values if you can say that would uh, that would be a part of that would be a foundation for the idea of beloved community um, the idea of beloved community can be uh, thought about in many different cultures in many different families and uh, in our African way we talk about an Ubuntu uh, community one that's really looking out for each other and so this idea of beloved community is a theme that we want to think about for our uh, church, Via Christi, and for your families, for your different communities that you are part of. What is this beloved community? And this is what we want to look at this week. And then each week coming, we'll be focusing on a different value. As we begin this morning, let us turn our focus to the Gospel of John. And we'll read from verse 13, uh, the verses, uh, sorry, chapter 13, verse 33 to 35. And Marisha and I will read together. My children, I shall not be with you very much longer, Jesus says. You will look for me, but I tell you now what I told the Jewish authorities. You cannot go where I am going. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. Amen. <clears throat> Amen. As we, as we consider this, this, this text this morning, the, the, the text of the Gospel of John, Chapter 13, verse 33 to 35. Let's hone in on this focus scripture as I have loved you. And now I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. A new commandment for a new covenant. Uh, a new commandment for a new expression of community. Well, as we consider this gospel of John, it's important just to get a little bit of an overview this gospel brings us, for example, the words of in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. Mm. John's gospel is a, a beautiful document for us to think upon God knowledge. How do we see God? How do we understand Christ? Uh, it is also uh, known to be a different gospel from the other three that would be called the synoptic gospels. But this gospel, one would, would, could even give it a description as the spiritual gospel because the way uh, through which John portrays Jesus. Uh, and another interesting feature of John's gospel is that Jesus speaks 
in long monologues rather than pithy statements or parables. Jesus, we hear a lot of Jesus' voice. Not to say that we don't appreciate the parables and the statements that come in the other Gospels. But in John's Gospel, we get to hear the Jesus statements, the I am statements. John openly proclaims the divinity and insists that the only way to the Father is through Jesus Christ. And so as we think upon this, we see a world of gloom and heaviness. And we see a world that is filled with the glory of God. But the clue is about the community for which John was writing. So as we think upon it, John is writing to a community. And Marisha, as we, as we come with this message this morning, that is where I want to really just focus for a moment. That John's gospel, the, the 13th chapter, verse 13, verse 33 to 35, and Jesus says, a new commandment I give you, is actually written to a community in that time. One would call it the Johannine community. This community that is there, uh, that wants to define themselves as a community that is different from the history and where they've come, different from the ways that they have practiced and moved to a new place, mm. a covenant, a new understanding, a new consideration. Mm. And we must understand this community was coming out of the Jewish community, so to speak, a community that had these rules and regulations, whether it was circumcision or how to dress or how to eat or what not to eat. And here was this new community of disciples that Jesus had established. And they were wondering, okay, how do we work some of these cultural things from the Jewish community now into the Jesus community? And so no disrespect to the heritage of the Jewish community, but there was a distinction that as people became Christ followers, this would be adding to a gospel that will be all more inclusive, all the more engaging, all the more redeeming, all the more reconciling, reconciling all the more of a covenant relationship that would be moved by this new commandment, a commandment that I give you, that you love one another. As we consider it today, um, out of the Gospel of John, this beloved community may be considered very, um, maybe if I can say reflectively through the words of Dr. King, who inherited it from a, a Roycean way of thinking. Dr. King heard of the terminology beloved community through his writing and his journey to India and engagement of Satyagraha and even a voice like Gandhi that I know now some folk have been you know, raising critical questions, but Dr. King began to think through what this beloved community was about. A community of wholeness, a community of racial equity, a community of gender equity, a community that would be anchored in the, in the love ethic of Jesus Christ. There's this key factor that Jesus coming into this community. Here's a quote from Dr. King, and he says, our goal is to create a beloved community, and this will require a, quali a qualitative change in our souls, as well as a quantitative change in our lives. A qualitative change in our souls and a quantitative change in our lives. Now, those of you that are doing research assignments and uh, some of you that are more you know, into academic work, when you hear these terms of qualitative and quantitative, it will almost take you immediately to your paper. For some of you, you might immediately want to run away from the terms uh, because, you know, you can even have a, maybe a, a kind of a bad uh, reaction towards thinking upon your research papers. And we have many amongst in our community that have actually spent time studying. But when we think upon a qualitative change of, of our souls, can you imagine the sole entity of us starting to recognize the social elements that are at play, starting to pay attention to what is happening in the depth of our society? So that when I think upon being a part of the beloved community or defining it, that for this beloved community to take place in a Jesus ethic, it's going to mean a qualitative change in my heart, in my soul, in the way I see and engage with the people, with the environment around me. And then the quantitative change uh, in, in our lives. I mean, right here, Dr. King has a play on what will this be for me to take the, the quantity that is within my storehouse, 
the resources that are part of my family. And then in this beloved community, my quantity of resource becomes our quantity of resource. There's a whole transforming of mm -hmm. the way I see the resources I have. So if I have a degree, if I have uh, uh, you know, an education, if I have um, resources of money, whatever resources are, then the degree that I have or the monies that I have are actually there for the beloved community. Mm -hmm. There is a quantitative change in our lives that if I have 10 pieces of bread and I only need two pieces of bread, I'll keep the two pieces and eat it and enjoy it, but know that the other eight pieces of bread can be shared in the beloved community. Amen. Amen. So as we think upon it this morning, uh, it's important for us to maybe also reflect with our children right here, right now, that this beloved community calls us to a covenant promise, a covenant promise of a rainbow effort. Amen. So for the Sunday school this morning, uh, I've sent out um, a little document, and I think Seth is doing the Sunday school lesson this morning. So as we think upon it this morning, we want to we want to have you consider how how God's promise is presented to us in a time like this, that a promise through the rainbow, it's a sign of God's promise upon us. And so as we think upon it together, uh, have your children maybe taking an activity where they can. And, and even if you are an adult person as well, think through the sign of the covenant that comes to us from the rainbow that God's promise is with us. God's promise is a part of us. So kids, have you ever seen a rainbow? Have you ever uh, seen uh, a rainbow in the sky? Maybe on a rainy day, you've seen a beautiful display of colors. Sometimes the colors may be bright, sometimes not so bright. But what happens when you see the rainbow? It's really the sunlight going through water drops and uh, the drops of water, which is rain. And then this displays into, or it, it, it refracts or reflects into uh, beautiful colors of the rainbow. And it's something in nature that's just wondrous to see. Uh, now, the last time I saw a rainbow, I remember was just before Corona, COVID-19 was announced. And, and uh, Seth and I had just come out of having lunch and we were at a beautiful bay and we saw a beautiful rainbow and we knew that an announcement was going to come from the president that uh, in a few hours time because we were hearing about this COVID-19 and we were hearing about Corona and we were wondering, okay, we were away from our children and we were a bit scared. We were wondering what's going on. Is our country going to go into lockdown? And we walk out of the place that we were having lunch and then we saw outside just a beautiful rainbow. And what does that symbolize? Now, in Genesis, it symbolizes a covenant, a promise. Now, covenant is just a simple way of saying that it's a promise. Have you promised something to, to anyone? You promised that you would uh, clean up your room. You promised that you would eat your vegetables. You promised that you would be kind. Now, this covenant is a special promise that God makes to us, that God will always love us. It's an everlasting covenant that God will always, always love us, that nothing that we would ever do or say, be it bad or be it good, God will always love us through that and always love us in spite of that. Now, that's a, a special promise that God would love us. And then what God did was when there was a time, and maybe your parents can share the story with you, of there was a time when, when uh, in, in our history of earth of a flood, but God brings this beautiful rainbow and says that I love all creation, everything under this rainbow. I, I declare my promise, my covenant to you that I will take care of you and that I will love you. And so whenever you see that rainbow, whenever you draw a rainbow, whenever you look at a picture of a rainbow, it's to remind you it's God's wonderful like painting in the sky to say, I have made an everlasting promise with you, an everlasting covenant that I've made to say that I will love you forever and ever. And so this morning, 
I think the first thing that we want to think about in beloved community is, is to think about a covenantal promise, this promise of covenant. And it's really a commitment that you make as a, a person. It's, it's in a commitment and a covenant we make in different areas in our life, whether it's in a marriage relationship, whether it's in a covenant relationship with our taking care of our children or in a commitment to our work, a commitment to this beloved community starts with that covenant. And this morning, that's what we would like to bring to you. Has a community, has Via Christi Community Church, has uh, families, what is the covenant that you have established in your communities, in your families? What is the promise that you have made to each other? And then how does this uh, promise and covenant continue? And this is where Jesus' words is so beautiful. It continues in this new commandment that Jesus has given us, a new commandment of love, not of one that's based in law, but based in grace. So a new commandment of love. So there we have it, this, this, this qualitative change of our, of our souls, the quantitative, quantitative change of our lives, and then this covenantal promise in the sign of a rainbow. And I'm reminded of that song, I can't help myself, but it's in my mind. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you love one another as I have loved you. And that's the beautiful words coming right from Jesus. Jesus, who is established this beloved community. Jesus Christ, who died for this beloved community. Jesus Christ, who, who put in a new way, a new commandment of doing things. One that was not based on the law, but one that was based on love. So as we consider today, consider our faith guides us toward understanding. God who covenants with God's people. In Christ Jesus. Our faith calls us into covenant relationship with God. To co covenant, to come together, to bond, be bound together in relationships grounded by mutual values, promises, and actions that are beneficial, just, and equitable. As a community of faith, we are called into this practice of being a covenant community of faith where there is benefit, justice, equality, Redemption and salvation for all. This morning, let us reflect together. So are we guided by promises and values and actions um, of our God covenant? And what is our God covenant? It's as Jesus has said. It's in that love that has Jesus has loved us and has God continued to love us and has Jesus Christ has shown that on the cross and then in the resurrection power. That love and that sacrificial love, that covenant love, then God asked us, Jesus asked us to then do that for others. Has Jesus loves us. And I'd like for us to just think deeply about that this morning. Think about all that God has done in your life, all the goodness, all the love that God has given you. And if God, if you feel that, and if you know that, that what is God is calling you to, to let that outflow, overflow from you. Because if you know that God loves you, God wants you and calls you to love others. Has God has loved you. And that's just an amazing thought to think, okay, how does this establish our beloved community? Me making a covenant to this beloved community. So for our dear members, what is the covenant that you make to this beloved community of Via Christi, to, uh, to parents, to moms, to dads, to husbands, to wives, to, to children. What is this covenant, this promise that you are making to your beloved community? What is the sign? In marriage, we often put rings as the sign and as a symbol of this covenant. The rainbow is the symbol and sign from God. What is the sign that we are going to establish? And that we are going to show as a community that we are covenant in love, in, in this love that God has given us. So are we committed to ensuring benefit, 
justice, equitability, and a message of redemption and salvation for all. Are we recognized by our sign of love, covenant commitment to God and people? Today, as we think upon it, a beloved community that is anchored in some values and ethic of Jesus. It's Christ that is a part of us. And what does Jesus call us to do? How does Jesus call us to act? How does Jesus call us to engage one another? And as we think upon it today, this idea of the covenantal committed love, that there's a love factor. I am loved and I am loving. I want to be loved and I want to be loving, creating the space of commitment in this journey of relationships. This morning, we can declare together that I acknowledge that I am called into covenant relationship with God and my fellow community members. I will seek to build faith, inspired covenant relationships grounded upon promises, values, and actions that testify to the redemption, salvation, and good news that I and we have received and embraced in Christ Jesus. We can declare that today. We want to see our church community, Via Christi Community Church, for Marisha and I, as we serve this community of, of, with a heritage of 70 some odd years, what is Christ calling us to, to abound with, to be bond together, to be bound together, to be coming together in the space of a love ethic community that says we are the beloved community. We are those that can act with the sign of God's promises. We are those that can act with the sign of God's love and God's mercy and God's grace. And when we think upon it, we can return to this. Is the Jesus Christ culture rooted and embedded with us? Remember, when John writes his gospel to the Johannine community, they having to establish themselves as a community who's feeling stressed by some of the anchoring heritage that they've received. Yes, some of that heritage will come with us, but some of it must, let, must be let go of. Yes, we will carry the laws of the Lord with us. The law of the Lord is perfect. However, the grace of God has come together. And so it's not an either or, but a both and. How can we bring this community together? Even as I think upon it today, those of us that are of different generations and we think differently, those of us that are of different culture and mindset, those of us who possibly have a different racial heritage and background, Within all of that difference, the beloved community of Jesus Christ starts to anchor and feel the rhythms of unity and union and oneness in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. The love ethic of Jesus Christ helps us to build this community of faith. And so today, we want to ask you to continue into the week to think upon how we covenant, commit, and be the beloved community of God. And so this morning, let us close in a word of prayer. O oh, servant, Savior, Jesus Christ, hear our prayers. We pray for your guidance and your continued mercy as we seek to build upon our covenant with you, our commitment with you and your people. Servant, Savior, help us to strengthen and renew and revive our covenant relationships. May we be committed in those relationships our relationships with you and our fellow community members, our family members as well. Teach us your ways as we seek to build relationships of justice, mercy, and humility, and relationships of faith, hope, and love. Keep us together with cords of love that cannot be broken because of the love that, we, that you have for us, Lord Jesus. May we be known as Christ's followers by your love. Amen. Amen. Well, we pray that that word is a blessing to you this morning. Uh, let us continue now with some announcements uh, and birthday wishes for this, uh, for this Sunday and this coming week. So over to Marisha. Well, we uh, have some um, uh, birthday wishes today. Kameshni Jankun, uh, Piri Pediyachi, and Shlakan, uh, I'm not sure if I got that, Ripo uh, Mposi, uh, sorry if I, if I said your name wrong, but Mposi, 
We wish you all a happy birthday. We pray that you would have a blessed day. And we leave with you Romans uh, 15, verse 13. May the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in God so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. So happy birthday to you in Shlakanipo. Shla 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 yes. In Shlakanipo and Posi and Piri Padiachi, we want to say happy but happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to all of you. Happy birthday to you. Thank you for being a part of the service this morning. Uh, may God bless you. We would like to close now in a moment of prayer. And by way of benediction together, uh, uh, please join us in the prayer of our Father, who art in heaven. Let's do that together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for yours is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen amen bless you all have a wonderful sunday uh, stay in touch touch with us at the church uh, if there's any communications you are welcome to utilize the facebook page to be in touch with us we also want to say be mindful that we continue doing our acts of compassion and justice into the month of July. And by God's grace, we trust that resources will come so that we can continue to serve our community as the beloved community of God. Take care and so God bless. Be blessed and may you display, show a sign of your love commitment in your relationships throughout this week. Amen. As we go, I'm going to close out and, and let us return to this uh, beautiful uh, musical moment with Alvin Fredericks. So let's enjoy that music as we close off our service. Take care and God bless till we see you next week Sunday at our VCC online.